What's going on YouTube? In this buyer's guide, we are going to go over the Gen 1 Ford Raptor. Let's go ahead and start off with the Raptor's specific issues that you need to look out for. And we will also focus on the issues that affect the 12th generation F-150 as a whole, as the Ford Raptor is an F-150 at its core. An obvious sign of an abused Raptor is a bent frame. An easy way to spot a bent frame without actually looking at the frame itself is to check the gap between the cab and the bed. You'll want to look for a uniform gap from top to bottom. A sign of a bent frame is a closed gap at the bottom near the rockers and side steps. Another easy sign of a heavily off-roaded Raptor are bed dimples. These form when the bed flexes while off-roading and makes contact with the cab. In light cases, you may have paint chipping. In more severe cases, leaving small dents. If you are already planning on off-roading in a Raptor, this may be a non-issue, but it is a sign of previous hard activity. Check the bump stops. They may be aged and crusty looking, but that is perfectly normal. Instead, you will want to look at the metal cups above them. Any sign of warpage or deforming means the rear diff has traveled high enough to make contact with the frame. A truck with a bent frame will definitely have mangled bump stops. And since you're already looking underneath the truck, go ahead and inspect the Fox shocks. Look for signs of leakage at the top and bottom end caps of the shock housings. You'll immediately be able to spot a leak if there is one. The oil is dark and will leave a sticky residue behind. Follow up with a test drive. Blown shocks will ride horribly. You will bounce excessively on bumps and the body roll will be extreme. While I wouldn't consider bad shocks a deal breaker, you can use it as a leverage point in price. Reputable companies such as TSW have a shock exchange program and can also rebuild your existing shocks for half the price of a new set. Continuing with the journey underneath the truck, look at the condition of all these skid plates. These will also show obvious signs of wear and tear from off-roading. Check inside the skid plates for any signs of fluid leakage. Look at the oil filter housing, CV boots, transmission pan, and the transfer case for any signs of leaks as well. That pretty much sums up the portion of crawling underneath the truck. Now it's time to jump inside and start driving. If the truck happens to have a driveline clunk while pulling out, don't be alarmed. It is a fairly common issue. The slip yoke going into the transfer case just needs to be removed and packed back up with grease. It is easy and simple to do. Front end clunks are often upper control arm bushings, misdiagnosed as bad shocks. Check to make sure four wheel drive engages and disengages without issue. If the truck struggles to shift back into too high, or if it makes a pebble rattling around in a tin can sound while driving, that means the truck has an issue with the integrated wheel end system, commonly shortened and known as the IWE. The Raptor IWE is a vacuum actuated hub lock. And when this system fails due to vacuum loss, the truck defaults to four-wheel drive. The issue can be as simple as aged vacuum lines or failing actuators. Neither are hard nor expensive to replace. The pebble or rattling sound is the truck struggling between the two high and four high transition. The IWEs can also be deleted with a kit. With the truck parked and running, Turn the steering wheel in both directions. Check for excessive resistance or excessive whining, which are both signs of a weak or failing pump. The Gen 1 Raptor is equipped with a hydraulic power steering pump system that is notorious for giving out with prior abuse. Careless owners will do donuts with the wheel at full lock, which will end the life of a pump almost instantly. Now let's talk about engine specific issues to look out for. 2010 is the only model year with the 5.4 liter 3 valve engine. Later in the 2010 production year, the 6.2 became a $3,000 upgrade. 
2011 and the following years up to 2014 had the 6.2 engine only. Starting off with the 5.4 liter 3 valve engine, common things to watch out for is just prior neglect. Owners that don't keep up with routine maintenance put strain on the cam phasers and timing components. Make sure to ask about maintenance history on the truck to ensure it has service records. Or just make sure it has a competent owner that did his own maintenance. Another typical issue of the 5.4 would be cracked and leaking exhaust manifolds. They are notorious for this and will have a ticking or pecking sound at idle that may go away once the engine is at the temperature. The 6.2 is known as the boss engine. This is basically a bulletproof and relatively issue free engine. After its successful debut in the Raptor, Ford put this engine in the F-250 Super Duties. Many work trucks with this engine have easily surpassed the 300,000 mile mark without a hitch. While almost perfect, it does have one rare issue involving the valve springs. In rare instances, a valve spring may break. Once they break, the signs will be obvious, such as horrible idle, misfiring, lack of power, and of course, severe valve train noise. The issue is easy to diagnose and is relatively cheap to fix. It only becomes a major issue when people ignore the mentioned symptoms and continue driving their truck. In which case, the spring may let loose completely, dropping the valve down onto the piston causing catastrophic damage. Luckily, this seems to be very rare with Raptors and seems more of an issue with F-250s with very high idle hours. That basically sums up the Raptor specific quirks. Now it's time to address the issues inherited with the 12th generation of the F-150. Rust. Definitely check for rust. These trucks are notorious for cab corners and rockers rotting out. Open up the rear doors and check the inside cab corners. Crawl underneath the truck and look at the frame. Surface rust is perfectly normal. Instead, look for holes and cracks as those ruin the integrity of the frame. Inspect the side steps and their mounting brackets to the body for rust as well. Pop the hood and check the fuse box for the Fuse 27 relocation. Fuse 27 is a yellow 20 amp mini blade fuse that controls the fuel pump relay. Fuse 27 is notorious for popping and leaving owners stranded. The relocation removes Fuse 27 and the yellow 20 amp mini blade fuse completely. You can easily spot the new 20 amp blue J case cube in the location of Fuse 70 if the fix has been done. When test driving the truck, focus on how the transmission shifts. It should be extremely smooth. It should not be harsh or jerky in the slightest. Rough shifts are a sign of low transmission fluid. The 6R80 is a tricky transmission to fill up correctly. Most people refill them when cold, but this will always result in an underfilled transmission. The transmission must be up to temp when checking fluid levels. I feel like this is a very common and overlooked issue that affects a lot of 6R80 owners with rough shifting transmissions after a fluid change. Ford also has an open recall for the lead frame issue that affects the 6R80. This recall is a software update that makes the truck safer to drive. The original software forces the truck to shift into first gear while at speed when the lead frame experiences failure. This is extremely dangerous, especially at highway speeds. The new software does not allow the transmission to shift into first gear when the lead frame experiences a failure. While inside the truck, check operation of the rear sliding window and sunroof, if applicable. Sometimes these items may be off track and may cause leaks if they do not properly close. The defrost may be unplugged, this is not random. There have been instances of these trucks in cold climates blowing their windows out with the defrost turning on. The third brake light is notorious for the seals failing. Once the seal fails, water can find its way inside the cab. 
Water intrusion can also cause random check engine lights, such as disabling heel descension. If the third brake light has condensation or any type of moisture inside of it, the seal has failed and it will need to be replaced. The blend door actuators are commonly known to go out. If there is a constant clicking sound when trying to adjust the climate controls, that is a sign that the plastic gear inside the blend door actuator has stripped and failed. A trick to prolong the actuator's life is to try and avoid setting the temps to their max and lowest settings. Check to make sure the driver's seat trim is intact and not broken. It is very easy to bump or kick this panel when climbing in and out of the truck. Basically, that is every issue to look out for when buying a first generation Ford Raptor in a nutshell. I won't go too in depth, but I will discuss some noteworthy changes in the Gen 1 Raptor throughout the years. The 2010 trucks were super cabs only. They are hilariously called scabs in forms. 2010s were equipped with Sync 1 only. 2010s have white face gauges and an outdated digital center screen in the dash. 2010s lack power fold mirrors. They also have the benefit of having a TCM that controls the transmission instead of the lead frame. The lead frame is an integrated part of the PCM in the later year trucks. The 2011 model year introduced a lot of changes. The 6.2 is now the only available engine. The Super Crew cab option is now available and is hilariously known as the Screw in forums. The 2011 introduced the 6.2 door badges. The 2011 did away with the white face gauges for a more modern and darker set. This change also included a new interactive center screen for the dash along with Sync 2. 2011 introduced the select shift button on the shifter for manual control of the gears. The 2012 brought along the Torsen limited slip front differential. AC seats are now an option for 2012. The wheels and decals have also changed versus the prior years. 2012 introduced the front off-road camera for navigation equipped trucks. 2013 introduced a revised version of Sync 2 that can be easily upgraded to Sync 3. The prior year trucks cannot upgrade to Sync 3. The center stack HVAC controls have been changed. 2013 introduced the HID headlight package and a beadlock style wheel option. 2014 introduced the special edition package which includes unique SVT beadlock wheels, a brick red leather interior, and a special ruby red exterior color. The special edition package can be applied to tuxedo black trucks, but not all tuxedo black 2014s are special editions. However, all ruby red trucks are special editions. And trucks equipped with the towing package will have a 36 gallon fuel tank and a trailer brake controller in the dash. So let's say you already own a first gen Raptor or maybe you're actually going to buy one. These are my personal recommendations that I can suggest for you guys to do as soon as possible. I would definitely recommend buying a Bluetooth OBD2 dongle and downloading Forescan to a laptop. With Forescan, you can do a lot of interesting things to your truck, such as disabling hyperflash when you install LED lights, disabling the TPMS sensors, which are your tire pressure monitoring sensors. That way you no longer have a dash light or those annoying beeps when you're driving down the road. You can also add a compass to your center gauge which is pretty cool. Something else I recommend doing is adjusting your front struts to mid perch. This is a free way to completely level out your truck 
without buying dreaded spacers or any of those leveling kits. All you need to do is just buy a set of spring compressors and then adjust your perch up into the middle level and then you've basically leveled your truck for free. And I want to share with you guys two things that I've had personally go wrong with my truck. And one of those happens to be the parking brake. This pedal right here, whenever you press it in and release it, you still have a brake light show up on the dash. That is a sign of a stretched cable. And I've just got used to doing this right here. So I'll pull up on the brake lever and the pedal at the same time. As you can see, the lot is now turned off. I want to talk about something that immediately affected me when I bought my truck, and that was a bad parking indicator switch. So what happened was, whenever I would shift my truck into park, as you can see, it's in park but the center dash would not light up. See how the P is red? Mine would remain white. And my key would not come out of the ignition. So I looked it up online, and sometimes the switch itself can completely go bad. But in my case, the little tab that holds the switch in place broke. And it's a very easy fix. You need no tools at all. But the center stack, once you grab it with both of your hands, each hand on each side, you just pry up on this entire center stack and it breaks free. You will have three connectors on this Raptor panel right here. Regular F-150s won't have that issue. And once you disconnect those three connectors, you have complete access to the whole gear shifter assembly. And you will see the black little switch that I'm talking about. It's on this side and mine had just come loose. So every time I put it in park, it was not triggering the sensor. So, like I said, mine was just a broken plastic tab. I used some JB plastic weld, glued it back in place, and I've not had an issue since. So I went ahead and started my truck and popped the hood so you guys can listen to what a 6.2 should sound like. A healthy 6.2, pretty much. You're gonna have a loud, top rider kind of tick, and that's perfectly normal. The fuel injectors on the 6.2 are extremely noisy so if you hear that that's no big deal but if you hear anything other than that then you may have an issue but this is pretty much what a bone stock 6.2 should sound like this truck has factory exhaust and the factory intake as you can see with only a drop-in K&N air filter As always, thanks for watching and please stay tuned for more.